Hey gun people, crazy cop story here. Um, let's see, I'm gonna do a couple. We'll do the gang stuff. Uh, well, I sure wish this thing had a double screen so I wouldn't have to flip it every time. <laughs> people probably get tired of my mug coming in there to flip that. So uh, we're working, me and my buddy uh, Joey's working, um, we're working a gang task force. And this is one where we're on the FDI uh, Safe Streets Task Force. We're also on a local gang task force. So we we just went out basically, I know people aren't going to like this, basically went out and harassed gang members and looked for gang members and tried to find guns dope from gang members and get them ID'd. And if we saw you with tats, we'd stop you. And if you're in a gang area or we saw you throw a sign to somebody and we'd pull you over and say it was a gang sign, we saw it, we'd take your picture, we'd record any new tattoos you have, we'd get your name, we'd put you in a database saying this guy's a a validated gang member, we'd ask him what his street name was, and he, you know, what do guys call you on the street? Uh, Paco? You know, or, uh, uh, Killer, or, you know, One Eye, whatever. They all have their little code names that they have it, so we'd put that down as our moniker and all that, and we'd gather intel and go in a database, and then if we had a crime later that occurred, and it said the person that raped me had a star under his left ear. Well, then we could go to this database and punch in all tats under left ear, and it would pop up all the guys that we had contacted in the gang, and that, that would probably be our suspect. One of the guys would be our suspect. So, you know, if you top in, you know, YOLO, uh, you, you only live once tattoo, you're going to get, you know, 90,000 people. Uh, if you top in three dots on the left hand, you're going to get so many hits, it's crazy. So there's some tattoos that everybody has, so it doesn't help narrow it down. But it gives us something to look at. So that's what we kind of did on this task force. We just we drove around plain clothes. We dressed down. We we put a red scarf on if we wanted. If we were in a blue area, we put red on to entice the blue areas to either do a drive-by, a shooting, throw a rock at us, approach us, try to intimidate us. You know, try and challenge us because we're wearing the wrong colors. If we were in a red area, we'd wear blue. So we uh we're sitting in this area and in my car. Went to ship for some reason. I can't remember. It went down for maintenance. Blew in. I don't know what the hell was wrong with it, but it went down. So when I went to the dealership, I said, "Dude, I said you guys got a loaner," and, I, and they go, "Yeah." I go, "You got an old piece of shit loaner?" And back then, the Cutlass Cat Classic Caprice were big and popular. You know, with the wheels and the, and they had this old piece of shit brown color. I mean, it was a piece of shit. And he goes. Man, we got that, but we usually just use it to run and go get parts or something. He goes, you want that? And I was like, hell yeah, that car is perfect. So we grab this, we grab a little red cherry light, we <laughs> stick it under the seat in the car, and we go cruising around this hoopty with our colors in it, and we just blend it in perfect. The problem was when we tried to stop people, we didn't have a siren, we didn't have a push bumper, it wasn't an official police car, so we'd stick our red light up with the blue light flashing in the dash, some people would stop, some people wouldn't. If they ran, we would call it in, get a mark unit, and then if they continued to run for the mark unit, then we'd get them for evasion. But if they got away from us before our mark unit got there, they were keen that and we couldn't really charge them for running from the cops because all we had technically is a red light, and you need a red light and a siren in order to stop somebody in California. Other places may be different. So we had this hoopty. And we're, we're driving around, the cops are pulling us over. <laughs> this car was so great. We're, we pass a cop, and the cop makes a U-turn, he pulls us over. We're like, what the fuck, dudes? Finally, we just start hanging our badges out. When a cop drove by, we'd stick our badge out, and they'd be like, what the fuck? And then hopefully one of them would recognize us. So they stopped pulling us over. But we drove this car for about a week while my car was working on it. Well, we're at this, uh, they had a big fair, or, you know, like the county fair. And it always bring in gang problems and the thugs go out there and intimidate, fly their colors and be cool. So we go park right in front in an illegal parking area where we weren't supposed to park with our little hoopty car and we're sitting in there with our red scarves on, our blue scarves. We got one hanging on the mirror and we're just sitting there waiting for shit to happen. And we're watching people as they come in. Who's wearing colors? Who's eye fucking us? If somebody is like going to give us a sign of the color, they see red and they're red. If they give us a red sign, you know, like, hey man, you're the brother, you're with us. Then we would grab them, hey, come here, police, pull out our badge, pat them down, take picture of tattoos. Most of the time, we knew most of the people. We had them all in there. Uh, if you look up West Sacramento gang injunction, they did an injunction in that county. I, I was kind of iffy on it. I thought it was a good idea, but the crooked DA, the one that tried to hide evidence that ended up turning in, well, he also, in this, tried to hide this 
and he did it secretly, and he bent the rules, and he did all kind of sneaky, sly shit, and I didn't want to be a part of it. I said, I think that's bullshit. Why are we hiding this? If we ain't doing nothing wrong, why are we hiding it? Well, I don't want the ACLU coming in. I don't want to have to fight it, and we don't have the money, and we want to keep it secret, so we had to hide, you know, serve a guy that we knew that wouldn't show up, because when you serve somebody, if they show up to court, they can challenge it. Well, we knew somebody who wouldn't show up because I think he was wanted, and he was hiding in another city. He was living in West Sac, and that's where we wanted the injunction, but he was living in Sacramento because they had a hit out on him or something. So we found him and served him knowing that he wouldn't come back into court to challenge it because he would get his ass shot because they were after him. And that's how they ended up getting the injunction passed because when you serve somebody with like a restraining order and they don't show up, you automatically win because they don't show up to defend themselves. So when you're trying for the gang injunction, when you serve this dude and he doesn't show up, you kind of automatically win. That was a lot more complicated than that, but that's kind of the gist of how this dirty DA, Jeff Risey, kind of slid this in. And I, and I turned them in for that too, but nobody cared, nobody wanted to hear it, but whatever. So, so we're sitting here in this hoopty and we're chilling out, all of a sudden here comes about four or five, maybe six guys, and pretty big dudes, and they all had the opposite colors. So they were like, who the fuck are these two guys blowing the wrong color? So they come right up to the car, yo motherfuckers, what you doing, what's with the flag, why are you? And as soon as they started, we were like, oh shit, so we either had our gun under our leg, because we didn't want to have to draw it. We had our gun under our leg, so all we had to do was reach down and grab it. In case we, you know, somebody did a drive-by on us and shot at us, we wanted to have our guns out. So we were ready in case somebody walked up and tried to ambush. We saw them, we were watching, and they come up, and as soon as they did, pull the gun out, get the fuck back from the car, pull out our badges, search them, did all that shit, ID'd them. I don't remember if we ended up arresting them or not. I don't think we did arrest them because the, the event was just starting, and we were supposed to walk around for extra security and identify gang members and any fights, any knives, weapons, because when you're playing clothes, they're not going to hide and they're not going to avoid you. And they're more likely to kind of bump into you and be themselves because they just think you're a dumb citizen. So before you go into an undercover operation in a police force, when you're working as cop, when you're working undercover, they have a briefing before the event. So everybody working the event is in this briefing and they're like, hey, here's what we got going on. We have this, uh, you know. They bring in the undercover drug guys. These guys, they in plain clothes, whatever you're wearing. They go, these guys are going to be working undercover. They're drugs. They're with our task force for drugs. So all the uniforms can see them so they don't end up jacking them up, arresting them, blowing their cover, etc. So they see them. Well, me and Joe were in there in our plain clothes. And they go, okay, these two guys are working a gang task force. They're going to be walking around. That's how they're dressed. Because we were kind of dressed a little bit like bums and hoodlums. And, of course, we had guns on. So if a cop didn't know who we were and they saw that bulge, they might, they might recognize that dude's arm. Let's jack him up. Let's throw him to the ground. Let's. So they said, these guys are going to be working a game. So we're like, hey, how you doing, blah, blah. Okay. So we go out. Well, <laughs> well as we're doing around, we're walking around, we're kind of acting like, you know, a little bit like we're drunk. We're kind of messing around because we're kind of blending in with the other trash. Well, he ends up pushing me or I push him. Somehow we get in this little scuffle. And he was younger than me, so he was always kind of cocky, so everyone's wanted to put him in his place. So I snagged his ass, spun around, got him in a chokehold, and I go, yeah, now who's a badass? Well, a cop from across the distance saw us. All of a sudden, all these cops were, and we have our radios on, but evidently they were turned, we keep them turned down, because we don't want to hear other people hearing it. But we had a little earpiece in, and we were goofing around, our earpiece fell off. So we didn't hear the radio call. We have two guys fighting. Over here, one's got one of the chokeholds. <laughs> All the cops are gone. <laughs> and by that time, we've let go. We put our ears up and we hear, hey, man, they're responding to fight. <laughs> we're listening. And we see guys coming. We're like, what? And then the guy runs our corner. He recognizes us. He's like, dude. We all kind of use code four. It's the damn gang guys. <laughs> and we're like, what the fuck? We're like, dude, we were just goofing around. We thought you were in a fight. We got better things to do than come harass. And he's all pissy and walked off and you know, went and cried to the sergeant. Sergeant came out later and go, hey, you know, you guys need to be more professional. And I was like, dude, we can't be professional, you dumbass. I don't know, we're cops. What do you want us to walk around fucking salute you guys? Anyway, ain't no cops, man. They don't have a sense of humor. Anyway, that was a couple crazy cop stories.